You look at the Senate intent language, it was always intended to be a floor and not a ceiling. And that was what we all were uh, working towards, that there would be a level playing field, that nobody could be um, less strict than anybody else. Um, but that it would not discourage growth of the movement. And this was something that the farmers in Vermont felt really strongly about, is every year we had uh, a farmer meeting. We had a um, vegetable farmer meeting, a dairy farmer meeting, uh, maple meetings, to talk about what did we learn in the last year and what, what are we going to challenge ourselves to do differently? You know, do we really need black plastic? Should we use biodegradable mulch? Um, what do we feel about antibiotic use? I mean, it was really that, just such a, a live sharing of farmer knowledge, which is how the organic movement really was created by farmer learning and trial and error, because it's not, it's not a movement that's come out of the university um, or research. It's come out of farmers and from the fields. Welcome to the Real Organic Podcast. I'm Lindley Dixon, co-director of the Real Organic Project. We're a grassroots farmer-led movement with an ad on organic food label that distinguishes soil-grown crops and pasture-raised livestock. You just heard from the late, great Enid Wanakot, a joyful and transformative force in organic agriculture who worked to create a movement in the state of Vermont that gave farmers a way to connect with eaters and to share best farming practices with one another. We interviewed Enid at the NOFA Summer Conference in 2018 and showed it at our first annual symposium in 2019 at Dartmouth College in celebration of Enid's contributions to our movement. Before we share our piece with you, we want to let you know that you can contribute to the Enid Wanakot Fund on NOFA Vermont's website to help continue onward with Enid's beautiful ideas about empowering farmers and feeding all communities with organic food. Now let's get back to our interview with former NOFA Vermont Executive Director, Enid Wanakot. My name is Enid Wanakot. I'm the Executive Director of NOFA Vermont, the Northeast Organic Farming Association of Vermont. And I started uh, working at NOFA in 1987. Kathleen Merrigan asked if I would have a meeting with Senator Leahy to talk about a national organic program and what that would look like. Did Vermont want something like that? And it was hard to, to say no um, and have the clearest perspective of, is this something that all the farmers in Vermont are gonna want? Um, but we had a lot of respect for Senator Lee. He really wanted us to work on, um, you know, he was very fearful that a California standard or other state standards would undermine a Vermont standard and not have a level playing field. So he really asked us to work with him and bring along a farmer majority to work on the National Organic Program. Something that was really important to Vermont is that our certification program was always farmer driven. We had a really strong farmer voice. And that was really the most important thing to us is to try to maintain farmer ownership and farmer voice in the organic certification process. We did come to the point uh, in Vermont to say we, um, yes, we did want a national standard, but we did not want it administered by the government, the U.S. government. We were unsuccessful. We were the uh, vocal minority. We did not, um, we weren't successful at, at bringing along anybody else besides the Demeter Association and Nofa New York, actually. Um, so we had to make a decision at that time. Do we try to make it the best it can be or do we secede? But with Senator Leahy in such a strong position and wanting to work with him and the, the opportunity of promotion dollars for organic and research dollars for organic that uh, Senator Leahy discussed, we decided we would work to make the standards the best they could be. One of the things that was really interesting, if you go back to the Senate intent language, that um, kind of the, the deliberations around the National or the Organic Foods Production Act of 1990, when you look at the Senate intent language, it was always intended to be a floor and not a ceiling. And that was what we all 
were uh, working towards, that there would be a level playing field, that nobody could be um, less strict than anybody else, um, but that it would not discourage growth of the movement. And this was something that the farmers in Vermont felt really strongly about, is every year we had uh, a farmer meeting. We had a um, vegetable farmer meeting, a dairy farmer meeting, uh, maple meetings, to talk about what did we learn in the last year and what, what are we going to challenge ourselves to do differently? You know, do we really need black plastic? Should we use biodegradable mulch? Um, what do we feel about antibiotic use? I mean, it was really that just such a, a live sharing of farmer knowledge, which is how the organic movement really was created by farmer learning and trial and error, because it's not, it's not a movement that's come out of the university. Um, or research. It's come out of farmers and from the fields. And that was really important to have that annual learning. And soon it was realized that it was not, um, the Organic Foods Production Act was, was not just a floor. It was a floor and a ceiling. And so you couldn't have, nobody could be more strict. So even though Vermont required stronger um, uh, health care uh, guidelines for livestock production, we couldn't require that because that would be, uh, you know, a trade barrier essentially and work against our farmers. So I think that was a real turning point for me because all of a sudden all of that farmer learning went out the window and that was what organic was all about. And so what I'm excited about now um, is the return of strong farmer voice in organic certification standards and farmers really asking the question is this the movement we started is this the movement we want um, is there something we can do about it so i'm i'm hopeful uh that farmers like dave chapman and elliot coleman and have really stepped forward to challenge their peers to say we have to get back in this game we, were, we created these standards years ago, and um, farmers are busy, and it's not necessarily their job to uh, watchdog, you know, administrative rules, but it's kind of come to that, that um, the farmers are stepping up and saying, this is, not, this is not the movement we created. So I'm hopeful, at the other hand, I'm concerned because um, I think there's a bifurcation in organic um, and a loss of integrity of the label and the word. And, um, you know, some people are giving up on organic and moving to regenerative or um, other words. And um, consumers don't understand what that means. And I'm... You know, I was concerned about something that's called real organic and then the other organic might feel like they're not real and how to... I don't want farmers to feel um, victimized by something that really was out of their control, um, which is uh, poor administration of a USDA program. Um, so how do we maintain support for organic farmers who are doing a really good job. Um, I'm speaking of the farmers that we have control over in Vermont and um, farmers that care deeply about the soil, care about their neighbors, want to improve and create the, you know, steward their soil to the highest quality and produce the highest quality food. And how do we, how do we support those farmers and that label and something that they work so hard to create and not lose the strength of that. Um, so I have some fear that all these new um, words are confusing to the consumer and confusing to farmers, and I don't want farmers to feel left out. And um, so I'm, I'm hopeful because people are stepping up and questioning and wanting change and wanting to return to the organic that they created. Um, and I'm an optimistic person, so I'm hopeful.
but I have some concerns. Thank you for listening to the Real Organic Podcast. We hope that you'll subscribe, tell your friends, and leave us a review on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, or wherever you found us. A video version of this interview, as well as the full transcript with links related to today's conversation, can be found at realorganicproject.org forward slash episode 19. Please join us next time for an interview with Jean-Paul Cortens, a Real Organic certified and longtime biodynamic farmer who's been a mentor to many farmers in the Hudson Valley of New York State and beyond for decades. To find a Real Organic farm near you, visit realorganicproject.org forward slash farms. <music>